Hey guys, welcome to the 25.3 Appian release notes. In this video, we will see that how AI, auto scaling, data fabric, and some new features in Appian which has been added empower you to build and collaborate with your teams more seamlessly and help to design more scalable solutions in Appian. So let's get started. The very first part that we are going to start here is with the data fabric part. So in the data fabric, as usual, Appian is taking data fabric to the next levels. Every release notes, they are adding new and new features in the data fabric part. So we will jump and start directly with the data fabric part. The first point here that is mentioned is more performant queries using the new function in a bank query record type default one field selection. So let's see about in detail like what this functionality means here. So see here query record type is not a new thing for us. We have all been using this for a very long time and it used to get the data from the record type. Now if you try to click on test rule, now see this is the Appian 25.3 version. If you go in the about Appian, you can check that what is the current version of the Appian in your system. So let's just close it and click on test here. You will notice some difference is there this time. Instead of returning all the fields, you might, you might not have noticed that, but if you see here, only IDPK is getting returned. None of the other fields are getting returned. Earlier, it used to return all the fields, whatever is present in the record type, be it 50 or 60 fields, all the field will return here. But now Appian has added more performance in this query part. Now one question is that how can we get the other fields if Appian is not you know like giving all the fields by default. So new functions have been added here. So here you can see a bank selection fields have been added here. So here in this particular function you would have to fill up the field detail that you want. For example in the movie list record type I want here movie title. If you click on test here. So you will get the movie titles here along with the IDPK. IDPK will always be returned here. Similarly, you would have to mention other fields in order to get that data. Then only your data will be there. Uh, you might have seen in like lot of peer feedbacks used to come like why you are passing all the fields, why not selection of fields. So all these things can get avoided as of now because the system itself restricts multiple fields here. Okay, let's move to the next part. The next important point here is limit has been increased for related record data and 254 query record by identifier. If you see this record type here, this record type movie list is related with other record type. For example, a event history it is related to. Now for this particular event history in database, I have added more data. For example, total 131 data has been added for the record ID. Now we will go in our expression rule and we will try to pass the query filter as 11 there and limit we will just keep it 100 for now. So this is the related record data. If you click on test here, it will return the 11 which is the Superman returns and you can see here all the 100 event history are returning here. Earlier it used to return only just 10 data but now it can return 100 data and if you use query record by identify it can even return 250 data as well. But if you just you know like increase by even one and click on test here so here you will get an error message. So you can see that the banner message of error has also been updated here with a new design. Okay this is also available in the interfaces as well. Now let's move to the next part. The next part here is enhanced query performance monitoring. So it's total fields in query. See, since selection of fields is very important part when writing the queries. So in Appian, in the query monitoring section, here you can even see that how many fields have been passed in all the queries in your application here. So you just have to go in the monitor tab and here in the query performance is there. Here you will be able to find all the queries and how many fields have been passed something like this one so here you can see in the query performance all the different column have been listed like how much time it is taking and here you can see that how much total field count is there for every query that is also present here so the debugging will become quite easy everything you can see at a glance you don't have to go into individual fields at all now let's move on to our next point 
filter documents in the record type. So in the previous version, we have seen that how Appian has added the feature to manage the document directly through the record type there. Now we will see that what are the new changes in the documents record type. So here, if you see here, our current data model is mapped to a list document record type there. If you go in this particular record type, it is mapped to a document as well. And here you will find a dedicated type for the documents part. So basically here if you will go you will see that some of the features have been added directly in the record tab itself which can be configured from admin console first is the list part whatever the documents that you have in your system you can directly uh, filter the data directly from itself like when the document was created uh, who has created it what are the different file ex extensions are there you can sort the data as well you can download it everything so here you can see all these features have been added here so that is about the list part second is the configuration part now in the configuration part automatic document cleanup is there let's say that in your project the documents are not getting stored in appian it is getting stored in sharepoint aws or somewhere else as well so you want to clean up the documents from appian so either you can do directly from the admin console here some configuration can be directly done from here or for this record type you can configure here as well like do you want to schedule document cleanup yes and when you want that 30 days so you can see here you don't have to create a specific process model a schedulers uh, to delete the documents after that we used to do that like we used to create schedulers to delete the unused documents uh, and find their timestamp and then delete that but now this all these things can be done directly from the record type itself so it is a huge enhancements over the last features and it really helps a lot in order to free up the server memory so this is the filter we can filter it as well and we can monitor and clean up the document as well from there now the next thing that has been added in the record type is that now you can schedule incremental things on the database backed records as well so basically if you go in the record type if you go in the sync options appian has redesigned the sync options all the options that you will see it has been changed here so, so earlier we used to see the sync options something like this one here so here you can see that sync options are present there and here one list of components we can see here and the generate web API here so it has been revamped here into this part here and apart from that sync filter has also been added here Earlier it used to be part of the data model itself but now this you can add the sync filters here and you might see that I have not shown the incremental sync because it is not available as of now even full sync is not in enabled in the Appian community version see it is not supported in this region and when you go in the documentation you will see that schedule incremental syncs they are only available to the advanced and premium capability tiers. So it is not available for the standard part. So this community version is part of the standard uh, configuration. It is not part of advanced or premium part here. So that's why like we cannot see these changes here. And uh, multiple other changes are also part of this one. Now the next change here is calculate business process metrics with record events. Now Appian here has added few custom record fields directly in the record type. So when you will go in the record type, you will see a message something like this one here. So you can see that here add business process metrics, custom record field to this record to calculate duration. So basically it will calculate your duration like what is the maximum time, what is the minimum event timestamp, what has been the total duration for that and when you try to create this, these three events will get created in your record type something like this one here, minimum event, maximum event and duration. And once you try to configure it since this are custom record field, you don't need to upload data for that directly. You can see that in the record type. So you can see a minimum event, maximum event and what is the duration that has been captured here for each record event that I have. If they have event history, so they will get captured here. So minimum and maximum they have been added here. And this you can access from the custom record field as well. So if you go in the custom record field here, you can see that calculate duration is also there, which is directly Appian is even suggesting you to add it here. So this all these three are already I have added. That's why it is disabled as of now. So this was the custom record field here. So similarly calculate duration we can add it here. Now coming to the actions part here. 
Now in Appian, action has got a lot of changes there. When you try to generate a record action in Appian, you will get much more functionalities while configuring the action itself. Earlier it was a straightforward like you select the process model and Appian will generate the record action. But this time it has got a lot of new features. You can select how your actions will look like. Just click on generate record action here. And you can see like multiple action you will get it so this is as usual as previous click on next here now this is the important part here you will be able to see the record types which will be added as part of your record action so it will even create the interface now it is asking that in the interface do you just want the movie list or you want the movie list documents as well subscribers as well something like this one so it will create a table grid for you as well and it will configure them click on next you will see something completely new and see here is the template part now the template is a completely new feature which has been added so with the help of ai it is giving like what is the recommended template for you so here you can see a form title is there wizard has been added here a step by step configuration is added step two and not only that if you are configuring single step form in one form you want all the things so you can see here section one is there with the form section two is with editable grids so here minimal design and bold design these are the two main designs see here this is also bold design this is the minimal design everywhere you will find this kind of bold and minimal designs here now multi-step wizard do you want to make it so different type of wizard as well you can get it here if you want it like wizard form step one two three so you can get it step two or five as a text we can get it here now as a horizontal wizard we can get it you just name it and and see so many configurations are available here so your ui is really going to look a lot better than previous all these things we would have to do it manually but these things are not coming out of the box so you don't have to face errors or anything else as well so here you can see a new sidebar template has been added here so a lot of designs have been added here in that so record actions has got a lot of new changes now the next important change is create translation strings from record type so in the record type if you will go here so here for example genre is there or movie title i want the movie title in some other uh, language here so you can select or you can create your own translation set directly from the record type here and you can select the locals which is available so you can see here lot of different uh, things are available let's say like japanese or something we have selected primary is japanese just created so here you can see here if i have selected that regional language translation superman returns what would be the note for the translation what should be the description this is the primary name uh, all these things we can generate for each of the record here so in this one translation strings can be added here as well now the next important part is drill down reports in the process hq basically in the process hq if you will go here the charts that are present in there basically drill down fields can also be added here for example in process hq you have created for example for movies list i have just created with language so you can see a french german how many languages movies are from so here you can see here drill down reports field has also been added for example if you want to create a new report that you want to drill down to so so here if you see here here the drill down reports have been added here and for example if i have created a like a new drill down report for that one so i can go and configure this see here this is the grid that will show on the drill down so these things have been added here in the process hq part as well so you can now configure your own drill downs and you can configure so basically this is the region or chart that you are getting there so that you will get as a part of the grid as well right now so that was about the major changes of the data fabric part guys so i will try to create some more videos so that we can cover more features about this release notes as well so that was the important part of the data fabric because it is used in day-to-day -day life and data fabric has been one of the top selling points for the appian 
because you don't have to do the complex processes etl and everything it supports ai inbuilt it manages the documents there it enhances your query performance there lot of new features keep coming in the record type so make sure that you try to revise the data fabric more often so that you are aware about all the new features that you can leverage in your current project so that was all for now guys we will try to continue in our other parts thank you